Uh, I mean, you have the, the, the pressure of playing a real person and, and someone who, who was an icon of a you know, period and, and uh, you know, certainly summed up the sort of 70s and Formula One of that era and as, as with you know, Nicky Lauda. And um, so there's, you know, you want to do that justice. But uh, the joy of it, I guess, is you have all this resource and information and, and it's a challenge. And these were two characters who the, you know, the, the, the factual... Uh, you know, events in their lives, and you know, that was far greater than any fiction that we could sort of come up with, and so it was all there and available. And um, to you know have the opportunity to dive into that was just just one of the best experiences I've had. And Daniel, you got to spend some time, didn't you, with um, Nicky in Vienna and Brazil? How insightful was that in preparing to play him? It was very good because I <clears throat> I had so many questions and. Um, some actors prefer not to meet the real person if they have to play them, but um, I, I, I did want that, even though I knew that he was so uh, undiplomatic and I was uh, quite frightened when I got his first call and uh, mm -hmm. it was at six o'clock in the morning and I saw plus four three, well, that must be Austria. Uh, I picked up the phone and he said, uh, yes, I guess we have to beat now. And I said, yeah, great. Uh, that would be fine. And I, well, just bring hand luggage to Vienna. In case we don't like each other, you can piss off right away. <laughs> I said, Ooh. <laughs> so I went to Vienna, <coughs> still very nervous, and um, you know, we started a conversation. After half an hour, I thought, okay, he, he likes me. He had a smile on his face, and he said, well, ask me anything you want to know. And then he supported me all the way through. Send for some more clothes or go shopping. So you can <laughs> yeah, I had to, I had to, yeah. <laughs> you borrow some of his clothes. Yeah, um, and unfortunately, you obviously um, couldn't meet James, but what was um, most helpful in your, your research, people that... Um, knew him, archive footage. Yeah, I mean, what was kind of fascinating was the vast, you know, uh, contrast in opinions of James and contradictions and about who he was and what he was about and whatever, which was just added more and more layers to this character. And and, uh, and I think, you know, I got to a point where I had to sort of, you know, take James's attitude of not listening to other people's opinions and just do my thing with it. And, um, and that was really, uh, you know, I think indicative of the, way the whole process went there was a constant kind of reminder while playing these guys to stay true to yourself and that was their message you know this is who I am and take it or leave it kind of thing and uh, it's a it's a much uh, you know freeing process than trying to hit a target constantly and you know being anxious about it. And what about the um, prosthetics that were used Daniel um, I mean the camera gets up very very close doesn't it inside the cars and you and you, you can't tell it's done brilliantly, so I imagine that meant some pretty early mornings for you in the makeup <laughs> chair. Oh yes, I, uh, yeah, that was tough. It was, uh, sometimes I was picked up at three o'clock in the morning. And the painful thing was also that I read the call sheet sometimes and it, and, and it said, uh, Chris Hemsworth pick up nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. <laughs> James Hunt first scene, kissing a nurse. Uh, second scene, James Hunt making love on a plane. <laughs> Third scene, Nicky Lauda checking his tires. <laughs> I'd stroll so, in at um, nine o'clock and be refreshed and ready yeah. for the day. Hey, buddy. How is it? And I said, yeah, hey. For six hours of prosthetics. <laughs> There's a real life rivalry going on as well. <laughs> I respect Sometimes. for his, uh, you know, his, his work ethic. <laughs> and down to insurance purposes, I imagine you didn't get to all that much driving yourself, but what was it like being behind the wheel of those vintage cars? I mean, you actually... It was, it was awesome, yeah. Um, we did more than expected. Eh? Yeah. We, you know, you, you have the usual kind of safety insurance guidelines at the beginning and then as the shoot went on, it kind of, we were sort of grabbing whatever we could and, and uh, ended up doing a lot more than we anticipated, and which is adds to the feel of the movie. You know, there's plenty of shots in there where you see it's actually us driving the cars, and you know, that's a, uh, you can't, I don't know, you know, you can't have that experience unless doing, you know, <laughs> this story. You have replicas of those cars from the 70s or some cars that were ex actually from that period uh, that we were able to drive, and, and that was a, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You had a hairy moment when you blew a tire, I think, didn't you, Daniel? Is that right? Yes. The tire came off, didn't blow. Yeah. The whole it wheel came, came off. off. Yeah, you know it. You know it. You remember it exactly. I was there. I it's saw it. I don't know who yeah. unscrewed the wheel or yeah. manipulated that, that vehicle. Daniel has his suspicions that point to my <laughs> team. But uh, almost a tragedy, wasn't it? Dirty tricks. The wheel came off and you bounced on the axle. Like, well, you know, but it was it. good to have that experience, honestly. It yeah, was like cool. one or two seconds we thought, oh, shit, that's really hard to, to control the, the, that yeah. beast, you know. Because I'm missing a wheel. Um, yeah. <laughs> Daniel Brew, Chris Hemsworth, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.